All right. So I think that we're going to go ahead and get things kicked off and then we'll make it available for a uh, recording or we're recording the webinar. So we'll make it available for others if they want to uh, watch from the beginning later on. Perfectly fine. Again, my name is Kevin Vanover. I'm a solution architect for Patriot Consulting and also the Intune Practice Manager. And I would like to introduce Rick Cox so he could tell you a little bit about Patriot Consulting. Thanks, Kevin. Super excited today for our, our fall webinar series, how to protect BYOD using Microsoft Endpoint Manager. I always like to start with Patriot's mission statement, empowering clients to manage cybersecurity risks by securely deploying Microsoft Cloud technology. Patriot is a top three Microsoft security partner with over a thousand projects delivered since 2015 and over 3 million seats deployed. We have a heavy focus on customer satisfaction. As you can tell by a 98% customer satisfaction rating, um, our customers are everything to us. Um, so in the spirit of, of getting this kicked off, we wanna obviously thank you for spending time with us today. And uh, we look forward to a great session, um, how to protect BYOD using Microsoft Endpoint Manager with our practice lead, Kevin Vanover. Kevin, over to you. All right, thank you, Rick. All right, so complexity is inherent in today's mobile environment with multiple scenarios presenting themselves in the simplest of environments. You have company managed devices, these may be dedicated to a specific user or devices that are shared across multiple employees. You also have devices that are employee managed, whether it's a primary device, uh, they're using their iPhone or their PC or what we call companion devices, something they are using to get online from time to time, like their personal iPad or a family computer. And then lastly, you have your uh, third party devices. So this is going to be your contractors, um, kiosk scenarios, um, but basically they're managed by other entities or they're not managed at all, but they're unfamiliar to you. These various needs naturally show up in the environment. Intune's app protection management and device management capabilities are designed to help you solve for all of those scenarios. So Intune provides us the ability to manage devices and corporate applications by controlling the way that it's accessed or shared. So user and device identity are going to be aligned with use case scenarios, location, type, tasks, corporate owned, and finally BYOD. Configuration profiles, compliance policies, and conditional access can be used as a baseline for the entire organization but we can also target those to very specific use cases. Okay, so the decision to enroll devices or not can be determined by the business and or technical objectives. And what we find with working with clients is they don't know if they have to fully enroll devices in order to take advantage of the capabilities of Intune. So they just presume. They're coming from a different third party MDM solution and they just have the expectation that they've got to unenroll their devices and then re-enroll their devices into Intune when they want to consolidate their license usage in order to get a better return on the investment or taking advantage of other feature sets within Microsoft ecosystem. Um, but a lot of times what we find is that once we've gone through what their requirements are, they really don't need to enroll the devices because the devices aren't owned by the organization. They're really BYOD devices. And if you wanted to enroll the devices, there's very unique reasons why you have to and many reasons why you don't. Um, the big reasons why you would need to enroll. So for example, if the device management capabilities that require enrollment make sense, like you wanna be able to push and pull applications or con device configurations such as certificate services or a VPN, then enrollment might make more sense at that point in time. But if you just want to implement governance over corporate data, ensuring secure access and use, then we can use internet protection policies and it'll provide those capabilities and some additional stuff that I'm going to educate you on during this webinar. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, it makes perfect sense. So the, you know, if you do own the devices and you want to have full blown, you know, device configuration control, okay, perfectly fine. But there are a lot of organizations that don't realize you can 
actually prevent data leakage and have complete governance over the data on those mobile devices with the Intune app protection policies. All right, so let's talk about Intune app protection policies and data governance and be specific about it. So our focus on Intune and app protection policies is going to be for the BYOD. So there are some basics that I want to get out of the way here. So users should own their devices. Users have an Azure AD account because Intune app protection policies are an extension of the Azure identity for the user. Users are assigned an Intune license. Users are assigned a Microsoft 365 app or enterprise license. This will allow us to manage the data governance and use. Now, Microsoft does provide a license M365 E3 and E5. Both of those cover all of the license requirements for the Intune bundle SKU. All right, the users are members of a security group that is gonna be targeted for the app protection policies. So those are just the basics. All right, so let's move on. Common use platforms. So this is where we're going to find that, you know, all of our Android devices and all of our iOS devices are going to be supported in this realm. So what do Intune app protection policies actually do? All right, so managed applications, what we call managed applications. These applications allow us to wrap a security container around the corporate identity by way of extension, the user ID. It does not give two cents about the personal applications that are on a device. So social media, text messages, photos, you know, whatever streaming services they might have, even personal OneDrive scenarios, those sorts of things aren't associated or will ever be affected by the Intune app protection policies because only the applications that we target, we call those the managed apps, are gonna be uh, governed by the Intune app protection policies. But one more really cool thing to know here is that they are identity aware. So that means that a user doesn't have to have two different applications for email, one for personal context, one for corporate context. It is associated directly with user identity. So a user can have an, uh, an Outlook mobile profile for their personal email and another one for their corporate profile email in the same application. The app protection policies are only going to focus on the corporate identity. All of the email in the corporate profile won't be bothered by it. So, you know, you have that separation of corporate and personal, even within the same application that is targeted by the Intune app protection policies, because it's smart enough to understand that that's a personal identity. I don't care about the data over there, but it does provide governance of the data, even in between those two contexts. So what makes up the components? of Intune app protection policies. Number one, we're gonna have the apps and the device state. We're gonna target unmanaged devices, so BYOD, and we're gonna target very specific applications that we want to apply governance to. We're gonna have a whole myriad of data protection. We call this data governance, and I'll do a demo of that for you and show you exactly what that means. Give me one second to pull it up. Right, and so this is a demo tenant that I have built in an Intune app protection policy for. So as you see, I just gave it a basic name, iOS Man Wii. It's an I, iOS, iPad OS, that's the platform that I'm targeting. I'm telling it to target all apps on all device types. So that means I'm really targeting both managed and BYOD in this case, but you can come in here and you can unselect the types of devices that you want to do. So I can do, no, and I can just come in and say, oh, I just want to do unmanaged, all right? And then I would just review and save, and now I'm just targeting the unmanaged devices, BYOD. And the public apps, this is where we're talking about the types of apps that we want to target. And this is where I can say, okay, I want to do all apps. And if I say all apps, that means all applications that are what we call MAM aware, mobile application management aware without enrollment. So these are applications that have been wrapped with the Intune SDK, and so they will respect the Intune app protection policies, and we can target them specifically. All right. You can also select Microsoft Core and all Microsoft applications. So the core is just going to be your basic applications, so Edge, Excel, 
all the office applications, or you can, you know, break them down, Microsoft Outlook, PowerPoint, and so on and so forth. Um, but it's also going to include OneDrive and SharePoint. And then you have all of the Microsoft applications. And if you click into that, it'll show you a list of what those are. So this is going to be pretty much all of the cloud apps within Microsoft ecosystem. Those are the applications that can be targeted by the internet app restriction policies. And you can see you can break it down by that. Now, when we get into data protection, you can see that I can prevent the user's ability to back up their data uh, to a third-party SaaS solution or iTunes or Google Cloud. Um, I don't want them to be able to back up my corporate data into their personal storage solutions. And these are the selected apps that we can exempt from the app protection policy because they're going to be covered later. All right, save copies of org data. So I'm telling it, I don't want you to be able to save copies of org data on the device. I'm going to force you to save any corporate data to OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. That means that those users need to be assigned a license that includes OneDrive for Business and or SharePoint. And you can take SharePoint away or you can take OneDrive away. If you didn't want to make that app available to your end users, you can do that. App dialers. So if you have a specific app dialer that you want to be able to be available and on your devices, you can go in there. You'll have to select the uh, values for that app dialer, but then it would become aware. Receive data from other apps. So this is where I can say, okay, I want to receive data from other applications on the device into my corporate context, and then my corporate policies will apply to that data once it's in. All right, open data in org documents. I'm going to go ahead and allow them to do that, allow you to open data from a selected services. I can pick those services and let them open up that data. This one here is a lot of fun. Restrict, cut, copy, paste, and paste between other apps. What that means is, is that I'm going to block users' ability to cut, copy, paste corporate data out of a managed application into a personal context or application, but I will allow them to copy, copy, paste from outside within the personal context into the corporate. So I can go one way or block it all together. All right, encrypting or data third party keyboards. I'm, I'm okay with that. So really what we're looking at here is an enterprise level two. Uh, Microsoft breaks into an application policy down into three levels, enterprise level one, two, and three. Three is the most restrictive. One is the most open. In looking at one, I really don't, it doesn't really do protection for data leakage. It's just, yeah, you've got an app protection policy, but it'll allow you to move data in between the context, personal and corporate and vice versa. So I don't really care for that one too much, but two actually does restrict the ability to cut, copy, paste, to print org data, things like that. Um, but then three prevents printing, prevents saving um, to OneDrive, or I'm sorry, to personal SaaS storage, forces users to save and manage storage, things like that. All right, getting into access requirements. <clears throat> so this is where I can require a pin to open the application. So it's a secondary pin. The user's gonna have to input that in order to open up the application. I can prevent them from using a simple pin like one, two, three, four, or one, two, one, two. Um, I can develop the number of characters that I want to have in their pin. So it doesn't matter if they have a pin on the device itself to gain access. This is considered this a second factor of authentication. And that will um, expire every 30 minutes. The number of, uh, yeah, here it is, time out of inactivity. So if they don't open up the application within, say, 30 minutes and they've left and gone to a different app, if they come back to that application, it's actually going to um, force them to enter that pin again in order to access the other app, even if they've been in another app that is in the same app protection policy. Um, I can allow for uh, biometrics. So instead of a pin, I can allow them to use the touch ID or a face ID. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, app pin with a device pin is set. This is really meant for devices that are enrolled. So this is something that wouldn't be um, applicable in a BYOD scenario. And then workers goal credentials. This is if you actually wanted them to enter in their full UPN and password in order to gain access to the application. That's not something that I typically require, but there are some organizations that may do that. Okay, and then recheck those access requirements after 30 minutes of inactivity, as I called out before. All right, getting into conditional launch. All right, so I want to get back to the presentation here quickly, but I did want to call these out a couple of really important things. The minimum OS version, what that means is, is that if they have to be at 16.0.3, or they will start to get warnings every time they open up the app, and I'll show you a demonstration of that. That forces your users to say, hey, you need to keep your operating systems up to date, because if you don't, I'm going to block your access so that you can't download any new data. 
and then also the uh, max allowed device threat level. So you have the ability to integrate um, Microsoft threat detection on your mobile devices. So if there is a device that has a threat detected on it, then it won't allow it to access corporate data any longer, and you can actually wipe the data from the device. Uh, okay, so pen attempts. So if somebody goes in and they enter the pen, uh, wrong too many times i can force them to reset their pin that would then force them to use mfa enter their full upn credentials then it would give them the option to reset the pin so they've got at least two steps of multi-factor that they've got to go through in order to get in to reset the pin because they have forgotten it for some reason all right and then we would just assign this profile and away we go so let me get back to the presentation all right, perfect. So we've covered the components, access requirements, PIN, the touch ID, the face ID, the inactivity, the conditional launch. We talked about, hey, we're going to have certain OS requirements, um, the offline grace periods. So what those mean is, is that if a, a mobile device is offline for, say, 30 days, I'm going to go ahead and lock the device down, force the user to re-authenticate. If they go offline for, say, 120 days, maybe somebody's thrown it in a drawer, um, they just forgot about the phone. If that device ever comes back online, it will the data will be wiped. All the corporate data will be wiped from that device if it is already stored or not allowed to be stored. And then you have disabled accounts. So if there is an employee exit, I can go in and tell it, hey, disabled accounts are going to be blocked from accessing it. So they wouldn't be able to get on their phone and capture any data that they wanted to really quick. As soon as I disable that account, that device checks in, it's going to go ahead and block their ability to access that data. And then we talk about the MDT, um, the threat level on the device and the policy assignments. A lot of data thrown in there. Um, so refer back to this if you have questions or if you want to, you can email us. And I have an email address that you can send that to at the end of this presentation. All right, so getting into conditional access. So what happens behind the scenes in a conditional access? You can see it's quite busy. Um, so when we set up conditional access, one of the things that's required at that point is you have to have a broker application on your mobile devices. So in the case of iOS or Android, they can use the Microsoft Authenticator. In the case of Android, if the company portal is already on the device because they've been using it for other things, then that is going to become the broker application. If Authenticator is first on an Android device, then it will become the broker app for conditional access and making sure the device can gain access. So the user is going to try to authenticate to Azure from, say, an Outlook application. The user is going to get redirected to the App Store to install the broker app. This is not something you have to go out and do on all of your mobile devices prior to in implementing into app protection policies. It will realize that it's not there and it will show them, here's where you go, download it, okay, and then I'm gonna move on. So it's a guided experience. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like. If the users try to open their email in a native application after the policies have been applied to their account, it will also redirect them to the App Store to install the Outlook mobile application so that they will use that because the native email applications on iOS and Android are not what we call MAM aware. So they're not aware, they don't have the SDK wrapper around them to support mobile application management. And so that can't be used. And so that causes a bit of concern for people because they don't want to use a different email application and they don't want to sync their contacts and their calendars. Well, we have an answer and can help you through that so that they will have a better experience. All right, so the broker app's gonna get installed, then the broker app starts the Azure AD registration process, creates the device record in Azure AD, and the process is the same as the mobile device management, you know, the enrollment process, if you went down that, that, that road. The broker app confirms that the Azure AD app device ID and the user and the application, the information is passed to Azure AD, to sign in to the servers to validate the access to the requested service. The broker app sends the app data client to Azure AD as part of the user authentication process. Azure AD allows the user to authenticate and use the app based on the policies approved list. And then finally, the Outlook app communicates with Outlook Cloud Services to initiate communication with Exchange Online. And then the cloud service communicates with Azure AD to retrieve the Exchange Online Services access token for the user. And then the Outlook app communicates the Exchange Online to receive the user's corporate email. The email is delivered to the user's inbox. So there's a lot going on there. But what does that look like to the end user? It's fairly simple. And I've 
basically grab some screenshots to show you what that experience looks like. So the user here, they've opened up the Outlook client. They put in their email address. So we got here, Captain America or C America at modernendpoint.com. Well, Captain America is then going to be said, hey, you, you use the modern authentication experience. I need you to put in your password. As soon as it does that, it's going to say, well, well, time out. You don't have the broker application. I need you to go get this application. So the user clicks the little button, get the app. Then they're taken out to the app store. In this case, it's an iOS device. They'll download the little authenticator with the little cloud uh, and an arrow down for, to download that app. Once they've done that, it'll say, hey, good. We're going to go ahead and register your device. And oh, by the way, your organization is now protecting data in this app. You need to restart the app to continue. And then guess what happens? The user is going to be presented with their Outlook mobile client and it'll start downloading email into the client. So it's pretty simple. The user is only going through a six step process and it's really just them authenticating one time, downloading an application. They're not going to be prompted for authentication again. And then it's going to ask them to restart the application and then their email data will come through. Now, there's a couple other things that are going on here. One, um, the user uh, might be upset because they're they're going to have two different calendars. They'll have the local calendar that's in the iOS or the Android device, and then they're going to have their Outlook mobile calendar. So what we can do is we can go through and do an app config policy in Intune that will allow Outlook mobile to have access to the local databases, the calendar and the contacts. And then it will allow them to see that data in the Outlook mobile application so the user doesn't have to have two different apps in order to maintain their calendar and contacts. And when someone who calls them from their local contacts database, it won't show up as a phone number. It will actually show them caller ID and they should be a much happier experience for them at that point in time. Now, if you have a user that loses their device or the device gets stolen or there's an employee exit scenario, you have the ability to reach out to the device and if there's any corporate data on the device in the corporate applications, they will be able to create what we call a wipe request where the, you know, they basically go in, they do, hey, I wanna do an app selective wipe. I want to create the wipe request. I'm gonna go ahead and select my user. You go out and pick the username. And when you do that, it's gonna give you the devices that are associated with Captain America. And you can see it's Kevin's iPad. And then as soon as I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and say, complete the selective wipe request. It'll show up as Captain America is the user and the state is gonna be pending. And when it completes, it'll show as the status of completed here. That means that the device has been contacted from Intune and it's reached out and it's wiped all the corporate data from the device without impacting any of their personal data. All right, so I wanted to give you a demonstration of some of the user experience on the iPad device. So I'm going to share the screen from that device so I can show you what that looks like. Get to the Teams app. And we'll share the screen. I'll give it just a sec to make sure everybody can see that it's okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to open up the Outlook application. I wanted to show you when I talk about, hey, it's not the right version. This is the warning that the user gets. Yeah, to access your data associated with the account, your organization recommends you run this app on iOS 16.0.3 or higher. I purposefully had this at the previous version because it's not less than or equal to. It's actually anything less than the version I put out there in the Intune conditional launch. So users would have to acknowledge this before it will let them open the application. And then once I've done that, um, they'll have access to the data. I also wanted to show you a demonstration. So I'm gonna try to copy data from a corporate app, in this case, Outlook. So I'm just copying the Azure DevOps thing here. I'm just gonna copy it. All right, and then I'm gonna to try to go out to 
the notes app which is a personal app it's not mammalware so i'll create a new note and i'm going to say okay i'm going to try to exfiltrate some of that data i'm going to go ahead and try to paste it in and as soon as i try to paste it in i met with this your organization data cannot be pasted here so that's the into and app section policies at work Number one, it notified the user that, hey, you're on an older version of the iOS. We need you to go ahead and get updated. And then two, when I tried to exfiltrate data or cut, copy, paste from a protected app to a personal app, you know, it just basically told me, hey, you can't do this. You can't paste that data here. So you can see it's effective. Um, and it's something, you know, all the policy settings that we talked about in the presentation are affected on this device. And if I want to do a selective wipe, I certainly can. Um, but it, I got it, you know, I sort of demonstrated it in the uh, presentation already. So I think we're good to go there. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share back. Here. Here we get there. All right. So with that being said, questions? Do we have any questions out there? All right, it looks like I've had a um, pretty attentive audience and they got a lot of good information. If you would like information or you'd like assistance with configuring internet application policies, you can see the email address at the bottom there, hello at patriotconsultingtech.com. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to this presentation and have a great day.